Would you like to learn a brand new and innovative way to invest your extra money that has a low barrier to entry and low competition? What if I told you that it is a guaranteed method to get up to 18 to 20% return on your investment? Tax lien and deed purchasing is the only way to get into the real estate market through the back door. No credit and no loans needed. This method isn't commonly taught and therefore the competition is very low for now. Put together a 14 hour info packed course which will teach you everything you'll need to know to get started. Learn at your own pace, step-by-step -step guided video and aids to start you on the TLC deed investment process. The course offers many learning tools for new investors, helping ensure you safely invest in tax liens and deeds. It let me start again. Oh my God. I love you guys. Y'all stayed on there. Sydney and G Major, thank you so much. I am so sorry. I can, you know what? Usually what I do is take these headphones and I put them on my ears so I can hear the broadcast. Woman, if you don't be looking at the chats, you all. <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry, G Major. Don't worry. They're going to come back and I will sit here and I will edit the actual video. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I could believe it because sometimes I don't pay attention to the chat because it distracts me. But you know what? I'm not going to do that. I had them both in front of my face. So I suck it. Suck it. Okay. All right. So we're going to start it again. You know, I don't mind talking. This was what I was saying. You want to hear it, hear it again. So now, welcome to Primetime Home Buyers, Buyback Team, the Tax Lean, the Tax Deed Certificate Experts. Okay. You're here with your host, Lashley, on a Friday. And I got to do a take two. Okay. Let me drink some coffee on that note because that's just like we wine. Y'all can laugh at me too. I appreciate you, G Major, because I probably would have got through this whole broadcast talking and it would have been muted and I would have had a heart attack. All right. So the first thing I was really actually talking about is how to profit, pro profit from tax liens and tax deed certificates. Now, we always talk about the concepts before we actually get directly into what we're talking about today. And today we're going to be talking about Utah's tax deed certificates. Now, one of the first things that I was talking about was actually being open minded to where you're going to invest in. I know most people get into any real estate market to actually probably invest in the state that they're in, which is great. But with tax liens and tax deed certificates, it is it has it opens you to invest in all states in the United States, including Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican, Puerto Rico, Guam, and Mexico. No, okay. So it's good that well, New Mexico. No, it's New Mexico, Mexico. I think it's New Mexico. Yeah, New Mexico. So those are domiciles of the United States, and you're open to do that. Now, what we say, how do you profit from tax liens and tax deed certificates? There are actually three ways to actually. You see, before I had two fingers, so I'm gonna correct it. I got three fingers. Um, <laughs> she may just said, there you go. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate you. Okay. So, um, there's three methods to investing in this actual process. One is through the tax lien certificate method. Two is through the D method. And I consider the third method, the over the counter method, even though, um, you can get either, or that's the reason kind of why, because you can get tax deeds and tax deeds, tax liens and tax deeds over the counter, depending on the state. So this is when I highlight that you can profit passively from this. You don't always have to go in to get a property. So there are methods or actually ways that you can get tax lien certificates from the county, build a rapport with the county, take your time and do your due diligence and understand the method and get some properties. What I was saying is that today, I don't have resources for you as I usually do. We're going to go in mostly into Utah and give you the key elements. But today I'm going to actually show you the property that I have been listing or starting to list for sale. This particular property, actually, I acquired over the counter. Now, I'm showing you this because I want to prove them wrong, guys. And thank you for your patience and coming back, whoever left, because I was muted. I apologize. I was just talking. 
So today, as I said, I'm going to show you that Pacific property and my maintenance of it. And later on this summer, after we finish the next four states, because we only got four more states to finish all the states of the United States, we're going to move on on how to foreclose. Make sure you that you know the uh, steps um, that's required for the redemption process for you. And then what do we do to sell our property? Because there's more to this, especially if you want to be in the game and have a large portfolio. You want to be able to know how to liquidate that portfolio as well. Keep it. And as we say, when we showed you about the trust, you may want to keep it in the trust and have it easily transferable to your family in the future. If you acquire five or six properties, you can have one where you keep designated in a trust. And we're going to talk about uh, maybe a family trust or a kid's trust. And automatically at a certain time or whatever you write within that trust, it can roll over to your kids. So these are some of the things we're going to touch back on this summer as we talk about selling. Okay. So today we're going to show you the property. So I can prove to you guys over the counter method, which is passive, you don't always get junk property. But actually, this one is actually land. So I'm going to show you land because I'm a land, land collector. Yes. All right. So passive investments is amazing. How do you profit from it? What is the main thing I say in all methods? Do your due diligence. I'm going to stress this to you guys. Don't be afraid to learn. Take your time. It's summertime. Chill out two, three hours. That's another thing I was uh, talking about. Studying the actual course or studying the method. If you don't decide to do the course and you know a lot about this, make sure you study about the state so you can be educated. When you talk to these government officials that's in position, they have more I'm going to say it, more respect for you when you make sense, when you know what you're talking about. Because sometimes they're not well-rounded in the actual tax lien and tax deed method. So you have to educate them. If you're calling the secretary of the recorder's office and you're saying you have this and this uh, type of issue and you need to speak to the person in charge of that, they may not know where to direct you if you don't know how to communicate. As we talk about later on, um, some of the things that I went through, and I got good news about the actual issue with the other tax lien. We're gonna sh we're gonna share that with you too. And good communication actually helped me through that. So how do we profit? Do your due diligence, baby. Okay, get on it. So all, I do want to highlight because I'm going to talk about some of the risk factors. I want I talk about my risks. Some of the risk factors with investing in any tax lien, tax deeds, or over-the-counter property is that you may get ne negligent property. Now, the county does not have to maintain the property. There are some actual um, counties that do do that. They have funding for that to keep it up to par to a certain extent because they know that that actually affects the price value in their actual county or community. This is why they are selling tax lien tax deeds or over the counter um, property because they want to keep the price value up and keep people in the home. So just know there may be some property that is not well maintained. So build your portfolio, go out to marketing meetings, meet realtors, not just realtors, meet inspectors, meet people who are able to provide services for you like um, simple cleanup. So, you know, because sometimes when you clean up the property, you may end up find out, finding out that it's not as terrible as you think. Now, when we were in Macon, you saw what I was showing you. They were literally covered with bushes and we weren't able to go in to see the structure. That is one of the disadvantage of tax liens and tax deeds investments is that not only that you can't see the structure, it's not recommended for you to go into these structures or try to because that's trespassing. Okay. So don't do that, but try to. There are some um, homes that you can look at um, on Zerillo that are there if you're looking at the homes and you can see the floor pans. Maybe get an idea of how long it was built. You know, get someone to look at it, look at it on a GIS map, but always be prepared to any tax lien or tax deed investment to do some renovations. If you're going to deal with homes, you know, I'm going in where I'm just going to be dealing with maintaining the property security and also grooming the lawn because 
I, I don't have time for it right now. But these are some of the things you can do. Now, another uh, risk factor is the tax link certificate can expire, especially Luke, dealing with over the counter. I'm giving you some hints and tips about over the counter because it's very important because I can sell you a dream like it's so easy. It's so it's so passive. Yes, it is. But these properties sometimes been sitting, baby. And um, that means that the expiration date may be coming up. So if you didn't do your due diligence and you don't know the state law of expiration and you buy this tax lien, this has been sitting for two and a half years. And then you'd be like, hey, well, the redemption time is one year in this in this state. I got one year from when I purchased the tax lien certificate. So I'm straight. You go there seven months like, OK, I'm ready. They'd be like, baby, it expired last month. And you're like, oh, my God. And, and, and this is what happened because you didn't do your due diligence. And there are some small keys that you should know that we always highlight here because we don't want to hide too much. We're not going to hide anything from you. The day of the original tax lien sale, if I can tell you anything, is the day that it starts to mature, meaning the redemption period starts then. No matter if you didn't buy it, she didn't buy it, if it goes back to the county. OK, so if it goes back to the county and they have the over the counter sale, that means that the expiration date for you whenever you buy it has shortened. OK, and I highlight that because I don't know how fortunate you guys may be in suing the county. I got I got lucky. Only reason why I got lucky is because, as I told you, I know contract law. Also, I know about um when you are marketing marketing law so marketing contract law allowed me to win that case okay so also i want you to know we do got competition i lied okay the only competition that we truly have in tax liens and tax these certificates right now that we're starting to notice is not only the lawyers who taught me this method it's actually the bankers we there's been an increase of banking institutions who are investing in tax liens and tax deeds and reacquiring the property. OK, so we want you guys to know when you get in there, go in there like a sheep and raw like a lion. Get your property. OK. And this is why we saw some states actually say, well, we do bank sales and we like bank property sale. What is that? And basically the bank property sales is saying. And what they said with that is that if you make a bid, they can pull your bid if they choose to and actually sell the parcels together to one company or one organization. We went over that a couple of weeks ago. So the competition is getting up. This is serious. About four years ago, five years ago, let me say, yeah, five years ago now. When I first got into this, it it wasn't it wasn't like this. You 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 Google tax liens and tax deeds, you got all these things popping up. So I want you guys to be educated and know that that's our competition buyback team. We're in it together. Once we get our formal program up to 500 students, you're going to see the magic happen because we have a platform within the actual school that you can talk to each other like it's Facebook. OK, so y'all going to be all over talking to each other like you, you got a plan. We're going to get this. We're going to do this, you know, things like that. I mean, otherwise, you don't have to put your money together. But as far as bidding methods, planning, strategizing, baby, you got to do that. Now, I do want to say something. If you are investing in Georgia or any tax lien state and tax deed state, I have to warn people. Because I have been receiving notices or questions about people being barred from tax lien and tax deed sales. And I'm like, what? What did you do? You didn't pay? And they was like, no, we didn't even get a chance to pay. And I'm like, so what happened? Now, we do have a few people who teach tax liens and tax deed certificate sales. And they actually take their members to the actual tax lien and tax deed. Uh, auction. Now, I'm not saying that you cannot go to an auction together with people, but what you cannot do is basically manipulate the auction. And um, what do they call it? It's basically like um, dominating the auction and you guys are working together to take everything. OK, so if y'all coming in as separate investors, me and you, we're not allowed to later on within the bidding to say, okay, I'm going to make my bid 
$15,000 so I can beat this person. Let's just put it together. And then we go together and we don't have an application together. You're not my trustee. You're not nothing. And we say, yeah, we're about to go pay for this property together. The county is going to say no. Some counties are going to say no, because basically that's cheating. So I want you guys to know that because a few people did talk to me about that because they thought they was going to secure some properties in Georgia and they were they weren't able to do that. So please be careful, guys. You can't go together, but you got to keep your bids apart and you can't monopolize. You can't monopolize on these tax liens and tax these sales. That's why bankers, they because they said one person with the money. They like, I ain't about to send 10 of y'all. We don't need to dominate. Let's just put the money together. Message. So if you have a team member, just make sure you have your money together before. Don't have both of you guys bidding like da da da. da. That's not gonna work. So that is a warning that I have to give you guys. Okay. And again, thank you for your patience. I'm sorry I was mute the first probably 10 minutes, but I'm gonna actually edit the video. It's gonna be re-uploaded for you guys. Okay. So let's start to talk about um Utah tax lien or tax deed certificate sale. Some of the things that we want to know, do the uh, state offer interest, okay? And actually in this particular case, in the deed, this deed state offers some interest. So you want to know about that as well as we want to know about the laws that govern the actual tax deed certificate sale. What do we expect? What type of deed are we going to receive? Is it going to be a quick to claim deed, a secure deed? Y'all know every time I wear this weave, it just be in my face and I can't stand it, y'all. I'm a brave girl, so it's, it's, it's driving me crazy. It's crazy when I met you. Okay, y'all. Now, I'm back. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> you want to know the laws. You want to make sure that you want to know how to close the deal as far as what you're going to get in the end. So if you have to do a, a convention title search, what we say, make sure that your budget actually entails that. I'm going to drill this in your head. The first budget you start with is the budget I want you to end with. Baby, if you have to add a little bit more because some sh happened, that's okay. Have a little buffer. But if you're going in with $10,000, my best advice is buy a tax lien certificate that's more no more than $7,000. Save $3,000 to help you go through the process of foreclosing on it, doing whatever you need to do if you need to do a title search. I'm just saying, that's the real realisticness um of a approach that I think that would be suitable for somebody to win. Don't put yourself in a situation where you spend the whole $10,000 and how long it took you to get to $10,000. What is your actual income? Where is it coming from? What is your base bills? That's why we talk about on Mondays where we talk about securing your energy. Those are things that you got to keep in mind while you're doing these investments. Okay. These are things I had to keep in mind as a single mother. All right. I'm trying to invest and I got two kids going to college. College, what are we about to do? Oh, we're going to plan and strategize. So that's some of the concepts we talk about on Monday. So don't forget about secure your energy. Now, just keep in mind when you're dealing with some tax D sales, they do require you to pay a minimum amount. Sometimes that minimum amount can be a portion of the fair market value. Don't be afraid. They, they sometimes they have a calculation. They'll say 2% of the fair market value times this. And you're like, what is this formula? Ask the county sometimes it's different. We're going to give we give you examples actually in the program. But let's say the fair market value is $240,000. You made a bid of $7,000 and that was overage. And they say everything over the actual um uh let's say uh $7,000 and that was over actually how much the taxes was due. So the taxes was seven thousand was five thousand dollars. The two thousand dollars. This is sometimes what the county do. I know it's a little confusing. Don't be confused. They'll take that two thousand dollars, and they will times that times the percentage of two percent, depending on what their percentage is. Two percent times the fair market value. Okay. It sounds like it's a lot, but it's really not a lot. So what end up happening is that 0.2%, because you're talking about 0.02 0 .02 times the fair market value. It's only 2% of that. Then you're going to take that and they may have you times it or divide it, okay? Times that $2,000. It may not be a lot. Sometimes it's a formula. The county will tell you. You'll have an overage fee, 
okay? And that's sometimes based on the fair market value. So the $7,000 of your bid, you will pay. And whatever that calculation is, let's say the calculation came to $2,500. I know the calculation seemed confusing. But if you're in the actual program, it makes sense, okay? And I, I show you how to break it down. We even talk about compound interest. We get back to the basics. So you actually have to pay another 2500 So the total amount that you'll pay on that tax lien certificate would probably be $9,500. Oh, if I mixed up the numbers a little bit. Does that make sense? Don't be afraid when they talk about the fair market value because state law usually prohibits the county for selling the home for fair market value under the guise of tax lien certificates and under the guise of deeds. Now, if we're talking about general foreclosures, that's different. That's why we distinguish what sell we're actually paying attention to. Like, you're going to notice, like, when we went to, I'm going to go to McDonough Tax Lien um, Certificate Sale. That's in Henry County in Georgia. And they will have three sales at the same time. One would be auction.com, one would be a, a, a foreclosure, and one would be the tax lien sale. And you participate in the correct one. So you see, they're making their money all around the board. You just want to come in at the, the lowest amount as possible. That's what we do here. Another thing you want to make sure, a lot of these counties has become very fancy. And because they made a lot of quotas acts, there have been companies that has been going, you know, kaboop. Uh, but they still have some liens on them related to um, homestead. So two things you want to pay attention to with homesteads is the laws that govern homesteads. And if it's a homestead on the actual home and if it's a lien related to that homestead. So that's three things, because sometimes if the home has a lien from a tax lien, obviously they ain't going to pay the damn homestead, possibly. So that is um, court information, public information. You can find that out doing your due diligence. But if they have a homestead, as we talked about in different states, they may have a law to say, well, this homestead home has to be sold at this particular amount. Or this homestead home has an extra amount of 30 days for redemption. The little things like that. So homestead is another key. And this is our checkoff list. And this checkoff list is provided for y'all. But once you're able to kind of like talk through this, every time you go over the checkoff list, you're going to be like, oh, okay, yes. Zoning and restriction. We showed you one state or a few states to have all of that on one actual platform. The things that we're talking about now, you can get a directory to the court. You can get a directory to the court recorders. You get a directory to the criminal court too to see. You get a directory to the bankruptcy court right in one pap, um, platform. Don't I know it seems like more enough? Like, wow, that's a lot but you're going to have the skills you need to make sure that you're going to win every time. And these same skills you can take to teach your family certain things. I had to learn about bankruptcy. I never filed bankruptcy before, but I understand the difference between chapter 11 and chapter seven bankruptcy and how mm -hmm. it will affect me as a tax lien investor. And then you can talk to your family like, baby, don't do chapter seven. You do chapter 11. Don't liquidate your stuff. Just reallocate your money. How you know that? Because I'm a tax lien investor and I had to make sure that these people about to reallocate their money instead of liquidate this shit. Excuse my language. But you see what I'm saying? The skills that we teach you actually takes you far and beyond. What we want you to do is take the skills that we teach with primetime home buyers and build and share with your community to help build from grassroots. Because what I told you, what's our competition? Don't tell them. Don't tell them Lashley said it. It's the big bankers. Best place is Georgia for tax deed sales. It is. Georgia is a great place. It's a high value place. But what I will say is that when you get into these counties that really have a lot of competition, it turns into a shark tank. Just expand your horizons. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going out into the country, y'all. Everywhere we go. Anyway, you know, once you start acquiring land in places that's not habitated, habit. How can I say occupied by a lot of silly city people and businesses, they end up coming anyway, because what we do as investors, we're increasing the fair market value. We're increasing the value of the property by investing. So, you know, like I said, uh, expand your horizon, especially when it comes to Georgia, because I'm out here and, you know, I want us to be chilling. I don't want us to be stressed out with this method. So. Uh, Clayton County is good. Bibb County, Macon County is good. But just know when you go into Clayton County, that's a high volume tax lien um, county.
So you be having sharks. The first time I went there, one of the guys was mean to me. He was trying to. I was just out there scoping. Okay. So I was out there scoping, talking to people, because that's what I do. I go and peep out the game. What's going on? And um, he's like, what you doing here? And I was like, well, I'm a tax lien tax D certificate expert. I have a school. You have a school. Now, I think he said that because he like, you making competition for me. I don't like that. You know, and I'm like, mm hmm, I got a school. Baby. So there are some sharks. Don't be intimidated by them. OK, sorry. That's that's my strong side. Strong. All right. So now moving forward, do the property have bankruptcy? We talked about doing the soft title search. Basically, that's what we're talking about now. Does the property need any improvement? Get your visual look at the property. Have somebody boost down. Have a realtor. Start in one state and then expand. Start in one or two counties and then expand. Don't be afraid. OK, then you also want to try to find a land survey. You can look at that or you can actually, um, sometimes they're free. Sometimes you can request it. I request a land survey after I own the property and I can show you where you go. I mean, as far as I, I'm, I'm in Maryland all the time, but there is one specific uh, one for each region. Sometimes depending on the state, a uh, land service, it costs you between 15 and $30. After you receive the property, you want to make sure you have that. And if you don't, you have to, I want you to acquire one. Why? Because you want to know everything. Okay. Everything. I'm nosy. Are the people living in the property is one of the most important things you want to know. Owner occupied properties add steps to the process. Yes. If there is a deed for sale and a person in there didn't get evicted yet, uh, you got to put them on notice and then you may have to do a formal eviction. That's an extra process. And that's what you want to calculate with your $10,000 possibly. And you want to type in, what is the average amount to have uh, do a formal eviction in Utah, in Colorado, in Montgomery, Alabama, wherever is that? Do your pre-calculations. I promise you about two to three weeks of consecutive research on one county, you're going to be almost a pro. OK, start with one county and then you move forward. OK, and is there movable property on the land? Also, I didn't add I'm going to add to this. Is it easements? Easements can be an issue. Easements may not be an issue. OK, easements may create some funding for you if it's a parking lot easement um, or it may be that this um, is like, for instance, a company could have an easement, for instance, like an easement with the I know this is far fetched, but this is an example of a circus and where I'm from in Newark, there's always this one particular place that they always have the circus come to. Now I know that they can get a permit from the county and things like this, but if they're doing it 10, 15 years, once a year, twice a year, they can create an easement with the actual um, county and say this particular property, we have this every year. And they did this a long time ago. Then you come and some geographical changes happen or whatever, and you end up owning that property. And then it's like, hey, I want to do a parking lot. Hey, I want to build a structure on there. You come find out it's an easement. Now you're going to have to negotiate with that easement owner um, to, to get it removed if you want to do something different. Or you can take that to your advantage and say, hey, well, I can use this for a place where I'm just going to use it for parking wrecks. We're going to have festivals. We're going to have things here. Yeah, because I just went to this festival before we just get into Utah right now. And the land was not developed that well. We, you know, we were bumping and riding. But they had um, names of streets on there. I said, oh, this is about seven, eight acres. The land is kind of bumpy. Some was paved. Some wasn't with rocks. But they were having an actual... Um, uh, Memorial Day parade for Caribbean people. And I guess what I was doing, y'all, I was being an EMT. I would say I'm being a nurse there. It was great. But what I, I really observed the location and things like that, the land. You see me, I'm like, oh, look at this beautiful land. And then it has some um, uh, electrical wires going across. So I was paying attention to that. So if someone wanted to build something tall there, that could be a land restriction. You see what I'm saying? When you go, start looking. I'm always, and I'm be looking, I'll be dreaming. I'll be driving like, that's my property. OK, 
Okay, I want you to. So now we're going to get into Utah. And the reason why I talk so much, because Utah don't really have that much to show, but we're going to get down into it. Utah have 29 counties, okay? And this is why I told y'all, y'all have over 300, 3,000 counties to invest in, 25 different jurors, 200, 2,500 different jurisdictions to do your bidding. So never think that you don't have an opportunity. Expand your horizons. So Utah is an actual deep state, okay? They offer premium bidding, which means that the property is offered to the highest bidder, as we always talk about. Most states offer premium bidding. Only some of them offer all that fancy stuff that I was talking about before. OK, not a lot. So don't be afraid. But I want you guys to understand that, because if you don't and you go in and don't have enough to solidify the deal because you didn't know that they calculated some of that, then you'll be up the creeks without a paddle. Um, Rockdale. Utah is too far, but today we talk about Utah. If you want to know about other states that you may be interested in, Entrepreneur 101, go into our playlist. Our playlist actually have all of the states we've been going over. Okay, well, most of them as they start to disappear because they're going to be just on the website for the members. But I appreciate you. Now, but the keys to Utah, because when we talk about these things, we want you to use this as a case study. Maybe you don't want to invest in Utah, but because the process is more simple in Utah and then they offer over the counter. I'm not saying that, though. I don't know if I remember that, but I don't think they I think they do offer over the counter in Utah. You can go over there and just start doing a case study and say, can I can I get a list? How do you register for it? You can do some research. That's what these videos are for. These are minor case studies where you can do the research and be like, hey, I found out a lot of information. I think I'm ready to invest in the state that I'm looking for because I have I, I feel strong in the process. OK, so that's why it's good to watch this. So anyway, please think, keep in mind that according to the state law, the county has up to nine different methods um, to execute their bidding methods. So that's why we kind of talked about that bidding method where, you know, they want a percentage of the fair market value. It's, it's nine different ways that this actual state can calculate. OK, so we want you guys to know about that. No, I do apologize. Let's concede on what I said. They do not offer over the counter tax lien. So, no, they do not. OK, some counties have interest in redemption periods. So not all counties in Utah have redemption periods for their tax deeds, but this is where it gets deep. Maybe you want to invest in Utah. Listen to this. If the homeowner do invest, or I do apologize, redeem in Utah, they um, have to offer the delinquent uh, investor 20% of the purchase price of the fair market value. Plus the balance that are due for the four years, because it's a four-year advancement or maturity in Utah. So they have four years of back taxes to pay, plus interest and monies that has been put into the property by you. So if they try to come back and get that property in Utah, you're going to have a whole lot of interest. So maybe you want to look into Utah if you're an aggressive investor, because sometimes people don't want to just invest to be there. They want to invest to be there. How about that? You know what I'm talking about? Okay. It's Utah sound nice. I mean, well, I, if you're a homeowner, you'll be like, oh my God. But as a tax lien investor, you know, that sounds amazing. They also penalize the homeowner with an additional interest rate of 6% per year. Okay. So after the homeowner is delinquent in the taxes for four consecutive years, the homeowner is offered uh, up via the county. Uh, executive's office, and that is the treasury office. Sometimes they call it executive office. Just be aware of that. After the deed is granted to the winner of the auction, the deed is known to be free and clear. You don't like Utah, but this is a good advancement. That's two ching chings for me. What? I'm about to look at Utah and see how it looks. Let's go pull up in the map. Look at me getting all ADHD talking about, let's pull it up and see what they got to offer. <laughs> no, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up my um my actual uh property for y'all, not Utah. But I'm telling you, it's 
that that sounds good okay so this 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 does not mean that there is no hidden leans that you must not do your due diligence why i say that because sometimes places have unrecorded liens okay and if it's not recorded sometimes in the county where the home is actually taking place at, it's probably located in the ucc um, which is a national registry that creditors use to put liens or to register the liens for people. So we're going to also have a sneak peek into UCC this summer to tell you the advantages of UCCs, what you can use it for, and how to read the UCC to find if um, the creditors and the debtors, okay? I know you like that, G Major. You you like that credit and debt and stuff, but I'm going to tell you, G Major, the foundations of your knowledge and my knowledge from where we came from really helps us in this process, okay? And I thank God for learning about the secure party method. Even though I don't totally believe in it, I, I it opened my world up into a research of knowledge. So I appreciate the people that I have met when I was learning about that. And I know we have some people that's here on this platform that's connected to that, okay? So we did go into Utah. And now let me see something. Oh, let me see if I have it up um, in my... Um... Mm, let's see. I'm just about to see if I have the actual property, the SDS of that property. No, that's the SDS of the other property. Okay. Now, I need you guys to give me about two minutes because I wasn't sure, was I going to, I wasn't planning on showing y'all, but I'm about to show y'all. So just a word from my sponsors real quick, okay? And I'll be right back. The real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, realist investing can seem intimidating. But today, I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? No credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams you will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access. All right, all right. I don't know if y'all can hear me, but y'all can't see me. I'm about to get um, the stuff on the screen right now, but give me one second. I am trying to pull it up and I want to show y'all the information and y'all can actually see our name on the property and everything. We're not, we're not here to play. We're here to slay today. Okay. So just give me one second, guys, because I want to make sure that I pull it all up, pull it all up correctly for you. Okay. So let's start with the uh, the SDAT of Maryland. That's actually where my property is located at. And this is the property that we're looking to actually sell this summer. Okay. So this is one of the things you want to start looking in the tax assessor actual. Um, well, this is not the tax assessor. This is the state uh, registry. And we're going to pull up the property's information. And what we're going to do is go in, right? See, this is Georgia. I mean, this is Georgia. This is Maryland. So you see all the counties right here where we could do all of the different property searches on the parcel. Maryland makes it very, very, very easy for us. And we're going to go into, this is in my crazy self, Carolina County. I got to remember which one. 
And we're going to go by the parcel identification number because that's the easiest way to go right now. Spe what? Okay. So now it says right here, it popped up. We're going to put the, di the district and the account number. So this is the district and it's 01. Now I have to say it. I don't have to read it. Now, what I was having problems doing was actually pulling this up on a GIS map. But because I have been to this location plenty of times and I have verified it, I know that this property is what it is. Now, I'm going to take myself off the screen. And if you guys can see, this is Primetime Home Buyers. I'm going to have to pull it off the screen. Anyway, when y'all pull up, this is one of my property addresses. I can't lie to y'all guys. When y'all pull up my name, my name's Siobhan Lashley. Y'all going to pull up all of my credentials. I am, I got to be transparent as possible. So anyway, I'm a gun noter. So nobody show up at my house unexpected or none of my houses because you never know where I'm going to be at. I just have to use that disclosure because I'm actually showing a lot of stuff to you guys. But I know this is public information and you guys will be able to see it. So right here is Primetime Home Buyers, C CO. And you see my name, Siobhan Lashley. This is why it's like this because I actually purchased this through the business. This is a residential property use residential is it a president uh, principal residence no this is the legal description of the property okay i had to figure out where the hell this property is from this legal description also they do have an address but the address is not totally the best okay when i pull it up on the system now on this area it says well i won't have this property for long anyway so y'all could go there but anyway y'all can see it but this is the map number this is the grid number this is the parcel neighborhood division section now the reason why i'm highlighting this is because this is some of the information that you want to know when you're doing your initial investigation in properties that you're interested in highlight this stuff so you could go back and start finding what you need now this is telling us the last assessment year so right now what they did in maryland is put our um land owners who just have land and parcels they actually put our property on a tax holiday what the tax holiday can be a benefit to developers as well as people who are selling and people who own the home in financial situations. They know that we've been going through a lot. Now, the reason why I'm highlighting this because the land value right here based is 16,700. Okay. Do you see that? But as of 2022, it says 5,200. Now, the only reason why it says that is because the assessment has changed. What they have done is use an assessment formula for the taxes. They have assessed the taxes with a formula that lowered the taxes for me. So basically, the taxes that I have to pay for this is like $200 or something for the year. I'm going to be honest. Who the hell pays $200 in taxes? So it's a benefit for me right now as a land developer. If I'm having hardships trying to develop, this helps landowners. So this is what I want to explain to you. Don't be afraid. Okay. So my original investment, I don't have off the top of my head. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. This is actually the deed to the property. Okay. Now, I'm not going to pull up on the screen because it's a paper. And I don't have it. I don't have it scanned thin. But it's going to tell you what I actually paid for. Now, to get it recorded was $20. I told you, like, giving you an example of recording fees. Um, transfer tax fees was actually, for the D, was, it says, transfer tax fees were, surcharge was $40. Transfer tax was $5 and change. The total amount to record it was $70. The actual transaction that I paid for this, and you'll be able to see it right here. $1,075 challenge is right here. Actually, this is the price. This is the price The transfer information. You see right here. It's telling you the last, and it says as of 220, they just updated this information, but I had this property for since December, 2021 but they just inf updated it. Okay. So this is the deed information. When we look at the deed information, it's going to have my, well, my name up there. It should be under this number. We ain't going to go under, through there, all of that right now, because I got the physical deed. So I want to show you right here. You can look right here, homestead application information, no homestead. This is how easy it is to figure out um, if they have homesteads. Okay. Oh, I see a question. What about Macon County, Macon, Georgia? That's Bibb County. 
So that's where we went a couple of weeks ago. So you can see that uh, actual video, Entrepreneur 101. I'm looking at the comments, G Major. I'm trying to be multitasking here, okay? So um, homeowners tax credit application, I don't have one in. So now I just wanted to show you that. Now we're going to take a view of the map. The map, now this is a parcel map. We're going to pull it off and we're going to show you. This is something that I require over the counter. Don't do never underestimate and never be afraid. Let them people lie to you. This is the actual property right here where the dot is at for $1,075 plus the foreclosure in Georgia. I mean, I do apologize in Maryland. I'm going to be honest, Maryland, you have to do a foreclosure process after six months so you can get your property and you have to do it within two years or it's going to expire. It cost me a total of about $5,000. Okay. So that five thousand dollars, even if I sell it for the pay, the base value of sixteen thousand, what's my profit? About eleven, okay. And the way the market going, all of these banks want to take all the bag on property. I'm a, I'm gonna see what I can do, see some negotiating skills. So now I want to show you this, okay? Look at this, and it's gonna now from here. This I'm showing you how to do your due diligence as well. Now since it was a parcel, we pulled it up, and it don't have no particular address. We like, damn. Excuse me. Where can we get the address? You can do a super simple Google search. I'm going out and you can see the cross street right here. It says Third Street and Crown Stone Road. Now, what we're going to go into Google and just type Third Street and Crown Stone Road in Georgia. And um, I keep talking about Georgia. What is wrong with me in Maryland? Because I'm in Georgia. Crown Stone Road. Excuse me, y'all. And I, I need to put my glasses on because being in front of this computer by this time. And what's the name of the third street? And it's in Marindale. Marindale. I want y'all to get a full picture of the actual property. And then I'm going to pull up the picture that I had after my lawn man cut it. Because it was looking terrible. So I don't know what they have up there. But I have to uh, maintain it. Give it to me now. Give it to me now. Let's see. Okay. I pulled it up on the map, guys. Where we at? Where you at, babies? All right. Move, I'm going to move that. And now we're going to pull it up on the actual physical map. Okay. Now, I showed you all the proof. Now, I'm showing you all the proof because I don't want you guys thinking I'm here just talking to you guys. We're not here to play. We're here to slay. The way that you're investing is the way that I'm investing. My dad going to sell. Baby, I'm not here just selling courses. So, here you go. Wasn't we on um, Stonecrest Street and 3rd? We can't see the name of it, but let's put the satellite on right now. Here we go. Give it to me now. So we do know that this is Crownstone Road in Third Street. I'm actually on the border of Delaware and Maryland. That's where this property is located. And let's zoom on down. Look at it. Does this not look exact? And I, I talked to this homeowner like twice. Every time I come, he'd be like, who is this black lady? It's a Spanish guy. I'll be like, I'm your next door neighbor, poppy. He was like, huh? And they don't speak English. I pray I could get, I wanted to sell a property to them, but I just can't get good communication with them. So I'm going to send a letter, but this is actually the parcel. Do you see it? Now you want me to pull a parcel up there so I can, can uh, compare it to you guys. So you guys can actually see it. So you can see how you can look for land and how you can acquire a good piece of land from the over the counter method. This is my one of one of my success with the over the counter man. So we're pulling back up. Where is this? Oh, I, I went out too far. We're pulling back up that. Uh, shoot, come on, baby. I'm sorry, I'm moving too fast. We're pulling back up the uh, SDAT map, and you see that district in the number. This was our identifiers, and this account number is the same number that you're going to find at the tax lien, um, tax assessor's office to find out information about the property. You can find out what you need to about Lashley. I'm here for it. Didn't they say this is my parcel? Let's go back to the picture. Does it look familiar? So I want you guys to be just as successful. So today, this summer, well, today, this summer, we're going to be selling this property together, baby. And we we're going to hope that we make $11,000 profit at least. Okay. That's the goal. 
Okay. And I'll let you know if I don't make the $11,000 profit, I don't have to lie. So this is the actual property. Now, what I'm going to try to do one more thing when I pull it, I'm going to pull it off the screen and I'm going to see, can I pull up the actual picture of the property? Um, that, uh, my, my, uh, lawnmower guy took i'll be bothering him i don't care i'll be like baby please could you take a picture i live in another state i know i got trust issues but i got to because i don't know if he's cutting the lawn and i told him if um you're not cutting the lawn and i get a ticket i'm not gonna be happy i don't want to get a charge she's like i understand ma'am there we go we're gonna pull up this property for you he's a nice guy and I appreciate him. And that's why you have to build relationships too, guys. This will be the last thing that I show you via my email. This is the property. This is the land. This is the land. I don't know. I think this was at this is a, this was kind of high grass. I think this was before. Yeah, this is after. He did a great job. Can y'all see it? He did an amazing job. I love this guy. Um, I love anybody who is honorable and do what the heck they're supposed to do. Sitting over here trying to take people money. That's not nice. I went on Angie's and that's another place where you can get some property maintained. Here goes another piece of the land. And as I told you, my original investment was what? $1,075 is right there on the deed. And he keeps it nice and clean for me. So what I can say is that also one of the things that you want to pay attention to when you have these properties is maintaining it. So one of the resources that I do share with you guys is Angie's List. Angie's List is where you can go on and find um, realtors. You can find construction people. You can find landscapers, but just make sure they're credible. And the reason why we go through Angie's because guess what? When one of the guys wasn't doing what he was supposed to do and the payment came out of my account, Angie's gave me the money back. Okay. I also had another incident where another gentleman that I just met, he was really nice. It was a Spanish guy. And I don't know how far he was living from that actual land that I just showed you, but I was paying him a good money to travel there. And then all of a sudden he wouldn't respond, but that was a blessing that I didn't pay him and he didn't do the job. He was doing the job because I never got a ticket. I don't think I never got a ticket. OK, so um, I want to say thank you to everyone, especially G Major. You have yo, you got my back, boo. You got my back. I got I'm gonna have another surprise for you because literally I was talking and it was mute. So I'm going to edit that video. I hope you guys learned a lot from today. I hope you guys know that I'm here for you guys to win. I'm going to continue to show you my investment ventures so you guys can know that I'm a real investor in the game with you. But I love to learn, research and share information. And I want you guys to win because I'm tired of inflation. I'm tired of the bankers. Don't tell them. They, they fuck it up. I got a curse. They are. They're messing up our economy. OK, so just um, just a heads up on Monday. We're going to be going back to secure your energy. And we're going to be talking about home um, appraisals, okay? What you need to know and what you don't need to know. Also, we're going to talk about uh, home appraisals that were not correct and how to detect them. Because they'll tell you anything. Someone was like, well, no, your home is taxed only based on this particular thing. This is a worker for the city because I was contesting my taxes. I'm always, I always question everything. I was like, well, I'm a taxes this much. Well, man, if you want to contest it, you can. Well, I'm going to contest it while I figure this out. Now, I didn't win. But this year, I'm going to do some more research and see can I contest it. I don't know what grounds I'm going to contest it, but they got to lower these damn taxes. Baby, this inflation is ridiculous. Okay. So, um, anyway, what we're going to be doing next week is that on on um, Monday. And then once we're finished with these next four states, we're going to start moving into how to foreclose. We know that. We're just going to key into that um, redemption process. Key into that. This summer, we're going to be talking about selling property. And we're going to at least try to go to two live auctions. I wanted to go to one this month, but the way things are set up and the consultations that I have right now, I can't do it. But next month, 
Also, you're the reason why my equipment, okay? My equipment is set up for home and I really have to get some equipment that's set up for outside. Because the last video, we literally had four interviews for you guys. And guess what? The auto, the auto was off. I was hurt. We had some great tax lien investors advice and everything. It was just like, it was just like me in the beginning, you. OK, so I do want to say, guys, if you're in Atlanta, Georgia on January 15th, you can see me live. G Major, if you out here, you probably going to come. We're actually having a marketing and a tax lien seminar powwow. It's like an after work mixer. We have this beautiful event center where we're going to have a seminar in one room for the people who are interested just for hour and a half. Get in and you guys going to have actual um you're going to get access to the program afterwards. You're going to get access to the introductory program for the price we're giving you. But if you're not interested in that, that's not a problem. If you're a black owned business and you just want to powwow market, talk to people, we have a separate room that's going to have that. We have vendors that's going to be selling some nice cheesecake. One of them got alcoholic cheesecake. He's so damn amazing. This guy is amazing. And it tastes good, okay? Um, and other vendors that's going to be selling things. And our goal is to have some motivational speakers there. Business owners, we're really still trying to get the lineup together. We literally got 13 days. I don't know what's happening. But we're trying our best. So if you are interested, here is the information. We're going to put it in the description. And all the information is located at the event center known as Eventbrite. Okay, if you know about Eventbrite, we up in there. We also have a seminars on Eventbrite for you. We have the over the counter, the like intro to it on Eventbrite for seventeen ninety nine. And once you get that, and I think I give y'all enough information to piece stuff together. You get that G Major probably did. He probably pieced stuff together because he know the method. He like I just need this, 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 that, and a third. That's why we have so many different levels because we know that we have people who are already acclimated to this. You don't probably need the whole program, but we have some people who are not, and you need the whole program. But then we also have people who are acclimated to this but don't know how to research law and do their due diligence. And you need the program, so we're here for you. So if you want to see me live, check it out.